ask me almost anything. So I've been asking some fans and friends to send me their questions about music or music making or life as a musician. So I'm reaching into the question jar and answering almost any question that somebody might ask, as long as it's not too crazy about making music and the creation process and anything else. But if you're new to this channel, this is where I'm going to be documenting my music creation process with weekly posts and content around writing music and improvising and being a jazz musician and all sorts of stuff like that. So definitely click that like button and subscribe uh, to be kept in the loop. So coming up first, questions from two fans, Doreen and Alice. Uh, Doreen asked me, what is your creation process like? Uh, how, how when do you decide that a piece is ready to be debuted? What do you love the most about performing and what places inspire you the most? And then Alice added to that, what's your favorite song off of your first album? And she asked, what artists are inspiring you right now? So those are five great questions regarding my creation process and also when the tune is finished. Um, my creation process is very improvisation based. I'm always uh, circling around different ideas when I try and write. So I will sit down and start playing. Maybe I even have some music in my earphones and I just start circling around and remembering things that caught my ears and um, even stuff from tunes. Like the last tune I wrote, I was definitely thinking of a couple different tunes at the same time and I would just cycle through them and be improvising into a song. Like literally, the more that I played, the more that I would eventually start to get a thing that was a song. Like from, here's the first part of it, here's the next part of it, you know, and, and this is the story that I'm telling, here's the next part of it, and here's the turn that it takes, and, and here's where it goes from here. I really like to get this mental, improvised map of how a song is going to go because that helps me the most in terms of knowing that it's going to be cohesive, knowing that it's going to be genuine, knowing that it's going to be built off of all the things that impacted me during that time as I experienced music and, and as it intersected with my life and everything like that. And more of this process is really unfolding um, as I speak because I'm in the process of creating a course that basically gives people the complete anthology of my process and how to get from the first note to the album um, and I want to help people reduce the time that it takes for them to get their work out there so for the best idea of what I do uh, definitely stay tuned for that course to come out in terms of knowing when a tune is finished because I improvise so much the finishing of the tune ends up being a part of the creation a part of the improvisation oftentimes I will add things on to the tune at the end it, it'll end on new concepts uh, because getting out of a tune is definitely a part of it you want to end a tune as intentionally as you started it and it goes anywhere from here are some stock endings that i tend to have in my you know personal toolkit that i use um, or here's a new way to do it here's a new vamp that hasn't even been introduced yet it's almost as if writing a new ending to a tune is a way to solve the problem of how do I know it's ready? Because the last coding on the tune is the ending, like how everything tied together, how you conclude it. And so that just essentially gives you your best shot in terms of feeling like your tune is ready. And for me, because I really just skip over ideas I don't like when I'm improvising, if I get a tune far enough through, it's most likely going to be something that I would uh, show the public because I've already solve so many of the problems that you know when it comes to is this worth sharing uh, because just of the way that i iron things out along the way what i love about performing performing is a completely different energy um, you bring new energy and new ideas um, you play off of the energy of your band who it's like a, a whole different composer is like interpreting your music at the same time as you and so it's like this synergistic effect of new ideas and and really making the whole thing come alive and uh, your band members make it a little bit easier to kind of stretch out on a tune because other people are supporting the performance of the tune you get to access new ideas you really just actually push towards it because 
it's a new environment. You have to sort of like reimagine the song over again every time you perform it. And so naturally you're going to get new ideas coming out. And that's really exciting because you don't want it to be stale. Improvisation is a new thing every time. So, And I definitely enjoy the community um, of the listeners. It's one thing to just make music and have having a band to create it with. But then when people receive it, it's kind of like they, they agree with you in how you made it if they like it and also that you don't seem crazy for wanting to to make music all the time so regarding the places that inspire me the most that's a very interesting question because actually i almost feel like the visualization of any kind of exotic or uh, inspiring or just you know really stark kind of place um, it might actually pop up in my mind while i'm writing something you know from a different angle a lot of the times i write stuff from asking myself what is compelling to me you know maybe I, maybe there's a memory i want to bring up and then i want to think about that memory and you know maybe respond to it if it needs to be responded to etc and and then music becomes the vessel by which you you speak um so the place has a any kind of a, a destination it comes in as sort of a like in the background it, it comes in as a corollary it's like well this made me think of this place for instance, when I wrote the, the tune of uh, Shores of Nazare, I wasn't thinking about Nazare until after I wrote the tune. Um, because I wrote the tune in Harlem, I, I would like walk around Jackie Robinson Park down there in the snow and just like go through things that I was going through. And um, then I started to write music in that solitary area and then online I just discovered that this place where people were surfing these giant waves and I just really liked the imagery of that so it, it came in secondarily rather than sort of this is a cool place that makes me want to write and that's not a bad idea at all and I might do it more but for now I'd say that's that's a bit more secondary regarding my favorite song if I had to pick one because it's always hard to do that uh, probably for Pieces of Sanity, my favorite song is Tomorrow's Season. It was one of the first tunes that I wrote, and it sort of grew up with me as I was uh, going from Texas to the Bay Area to New York City. Um, I was revising that tune along the way in the background of everything else I was doing. It's kind of special in that regard. Since it's a long-form tune and it's it's got a lot of different harmonies, it's sort of a tapestry of different melodic and harmonic ideas in particular. They sort of span the entire horizon of my development those 10 or so years. It's pretty special in that regard, and I can just sit down and play it anytime. It has the, the, the best speed for me to, to play it. It's almost like a long-distance jog of my music. It just puts me back into the muse that I had when I wrote this stuff, and it kind of feeds my art that way. Regarding the artists inspiring me the most right now, that's a great question, and there's a lot of them nowadays. But if there was anybody that sort of directly influences my writing nowadays, it's probably Steely Dan, Donald Fagan, because I'll actually play through some of the chords of those tunes or, or the, mel the melodies in the chords while I'm writing, just because it's, I guess it just kind of tickles my muse in the in all the right ways right now so um and i listen to stuff like kamasi washington heaven and earth um his album from 2019 i think um some of those uh, some of the music in that album just like really hits me the right way to make music so that's a big inspiration right now and i'm inspired by some of these new electronic based artists like this canadian guy named anomaly i listen to a lot and i love knower Pretty much everybody in the jazz community loves Knower, and I'm no exception. I also listen to some other very classic artists. I listen to Kenny Loggins for a little bit. I listen to Joni Mitchell. I even listen to Sabrina Carpenter. I think, I think her new album is just a huge leap up in just everything, music and um, energy and coolness. So I actually like it, even though it's pop. <laughs> And of course, all the usual suspects in classical music, Beethoven and Ravel, I listen to a lot. That won't go away, probably, um, as I am often explaining. So yeah, that's just about it. Um, I appreciate these questions, and there's more that I'm going to be answering. As part of my fundraiser, I'm inviting anybody who contributes to ask a question, and I will put those first in line 
in this series. So make sure to send me your questions if you get them, if they come up. If you just have something you want me to cover, I will definitely do that. Um, Awesome. Thanks so much. Don't forget to subscribe and see you later.